Okay, we're gonna talk about chemicals for just a second here. Um, there are, let's say you're cleaning a bathroom and the shower has um, mold and mildew in the corners. What are you gonna use? Bleach, that's typical, right? Get, kill the mold, kill the mildew. Um, and, but if there's soap scum and hard water deposits and scale buildup, you know, maybe the city has really hard water and there's this white crusty crap everywhere. Okay, what are you gonna do to clean that? What would be your? I use the Comet uh, scrub. Powder? The powder with uh -huh. the brush is usually uh -huh. what I use. You know what that is? Bleach. It's the same thing that you, you know, it's bleach, except it has a little abrasion. abrasion. Yeah, but that's not gonna get your hard water deposits. That's not for soap scum, or that's not for hard water, that's not for lime scale, that's for mold and mildew because it's bleach. It's powder bleach or spray, bleach. it doesn't matter what form it takes. Even if it has a little scouring, you know, like scrubby, scratchy stuff to it, it's not enough. And that's why when you go to Walmart and you look at the shelf, uh, there's a whole nother row of stuff called removes soap scum, rust, and hard water stains and tub and, tub and shower cleaner. This one's called the works. I think it's uh, Dollar Tree sells it or something, but Comet Spray, you ever see Comet Powder and then Comet Spray. All right, two completely different chemicals. 100%, you can never mix them. They do not go together. If you mix them and breathe it, you will burn your lungs. It's very bad. One is bleach, one is acid. You never want to mix them. Did I emphasize that enough? <laughs> <laughs> um, okay, but uh, I had a housekeeping business for years. I had big staff and all these huge houses. And this was like part of the training. It's very serious. You have showers that have two problems. You need two chemicals and they cannot touch. So you've got to get rid of your mold and your mildew with your powder, your comet, your, um, your bleach. But then you gotta take a cup full of water, rinse it, rinse it, get rid of it. And then you get out your hard water deposit, soap scum, uh, acid spray. Now that comes in a brand. Comet also sells that, but the Comet spray is acid. And so, and then this one's called the Works, and that's from the Dollar Tree, but it's the same product in, the, in a bottle. And then there's also um, Scrubbing Bubbles, has a soap scum and hard water deposit. And CLR, that's what it is. CLR is this, okay? So there's this one category of chemicals, acid. One category, bleach and they never can touch. So if you've got hard water deposits and lime scale, you know, that's perfect. And you can spray that like in the water fountain down the hallway or around the, the handles in the bathroom that starts building up and it's white and it's crusty. And uh, you know, a rag is not gonna get that off. It needs to soak with some acid. And just a little, just sprinkle up, just a little teeny squirt, let it sit, go do something else, come back, scrub it off, use your razor, use your scratchy pad, use, you know, something, a little grout brush or something like that. Okay, and so that's why this is here. And that's why there's only this much in it because you don't need this very often. There's not very many things you're gonna use it on. It just kind of goes in this bucket over here as an extra something to have for those special occasions. Um, pick. And then speaking of, this has acid in it too. Sometimes people use this on showers mm -hmm. and shower, you talked about glass earlier, really tough. Sometimes people will use this because it has some acid in it. Anyway, um, or this one, this one has bleach, but some of them have acid and people will use that. Uh, but this, we're not using this every single night here. It's once a week. We're gonna give those toilets a good rundown once a week. So it goes in the extra bucket. Because you really don't want to carry that with you every night. Um, I'm gonna go back to bleach for one second. We don't use bleach very much. There's no need for it. There's nothing that need, the only thing that needs bleach is the guy who does carpet staining because that's what happens with bleach. You're gonna bleach somebody's carpet and ruin it if you're toting bleach all over the place. And I do like to have Comet powder with the bleach in it 
as some of my accounts, I'll just use that in the toilets, but I'm kind of particular about where I use that, uh, who I allow to use that. But let me just tell you, these come back to me with bleach all over them. All my uniforms come back, bleach, bleach, why? We're not even cleaning houses. We're just cleaning this, there's no reason. And so be very careful with bleach. There's hardly ever a reason to use it. Um, you know, we're mostly just dealing with hard water deposits and, and things like that. So um, you gotta think about your chemicals and it does take a little bit of chemical knowledge. Like it's, it's important for you guys uh, and even me as the cleaner and the trainer or whatever, have some chemical knowledge, know your business, know what you do. Um, glass cleaner. There are two different kinds of glass cleaners out there. One has ammonia and one has vinegar. And so even at Walmart, you go, there's Windex, Windex with ammonia, Windex with vinegar. You don't ever want to mix those. They don't do the same thing. They don't work the same. And some people like one, some people like the other. But if you're, if this is down to here, it just says glass on it. If this is down to here and you're going to add and kind of, you know, like we have some concentrate, we're going to add and fill it up. Don't add the one made with vinegar to the one made with ammonia. Yeah. Like we got to be smart. We got to realize, ah, we can't just randomly um, do stuff without really checking. And uh, one more thing about chemicals. Thank you for your patience. <laughs> it's really boring. <laughs> but I can talk about chemicals forever. Uh, label your bottles. I'm just telling you, if I show up to an account and I find a bottle that does not have any words on it or a label and has liquid in it, I don't care if it's clear, I don't care if it's water, 25 bucks, I'm gonna charge you. OSHA's gonna charge me 1500. It is a $1,500 fine wow. from OSHA to the janitor, the, the company. Yeah, to, for, to have non-label. Do you ever go into the salon, the beauty parlor, any, you know, any kind of salon? Everything is labeled, clean, dirty, sanitizer, like clearly labeled. It's OSHA, it's mandated. And so are we. And does, how often does somebody's janitor's closet get inspected by OSHA? I don't know, I have, right, yeah. But that, I tell you what, if they showed up here for Meritress and they got fined, they're gonna pass that on to me. They're gonna be like, uh, that's not my janitor's closet. <laughs> that's her stuff. <laughs> yeah. So be smart, my friends, um, uh, because what if you're sick one day? What if something happens to you? You get in a car wreck. Now we gotta go clean your job for you. And we show up and there's nothing marked. Ah! Okay, so there's multiple levels of frustration that come with that. Uh, and so if you have bottles that aren't labeled, you don't know, vox me, communicate, let me know. I'll, so Alex is going to show up. She's going to empty everything out. She's going to clean it up. She's going to fill it with the right stuff. She's going to put a label on it for you. Like, it's going to be handled. We just have to know. Yep. Yep. Knowledge. <laughs> Communication. Uh, I'm trying to think if there's any other chemical thing to say. Steramine. Okay, this is, uh, it says steramine. It's labeled. It says disinfectant on top because that's what steramine is. Super mild, super, mild, you know, like it's, it works. This is what is used before coronavirus was ever a thing. This was a disinfectant that was used in the scuba diving industry as well as the restaurant industry. And we, I used to teach scuba diving and we would use steramine uh, to clean and disinfect the inside of air tanks because when you refill them, people would use them, bring them in, can you refill it? And sometimes the seal would be broke or what, you know, there'd be something wrong with it. Then you have to take the whole thing apart, sanitize it, dry it, blow it out. Um, but Steramine is what we would use because it works. I mean, it is the deal. And same with restaurants. You know, a restaurant will take a big tub of hot water, throw a Steramine tablet in it, dunk all the utensils, everything, you know, like that's their sterilization process. So this stuff has been around for a long time. So uh, super handy for virus and disinfecting facilities. It, do, it doesn't streak, it doesn't leave a residue. There's no acid, it's neutral pH, so it's not acidic, it's not alkaline. Um, awesome, awesome product, just happened to be already out there. Um, and you notice that I cleaned this whole bank with this. I sprayed the rag with this. So we were kind of sanitizing as we were polishing and wiping and getting rid of fingerprints and stuff like that. Um, so anyway, that's what that is. Uh, they, this is almost out. And I have in the trailer outside uh, the tablets to make more. 
and bake a gallon bucket of water, just fill it up, make a whole gallon and then pour it in, refill it. Anyway, uh, if you don't know where a chemical is, if you, um, you know, you're getting low on something, you don't know how to call me, box me, I'll show you, I'll tell you or whatever, or we'll come take care of it. All right. I think that's it. I think unless, did you have any other, um, yeah, for chemicals? Not really. Yeah. Thank you.